Well, welcome back to another spring carp fishing adventure. I'm using some banana flavored tiger nuts for the hook bait today. Just get to the, that information right from the start. And we're just, uh, the weather's kind of at the tail end of this uh, crazy, unusually warm mass of air that passed over the last few days. Today's the 14th of April. Yesterday, it was 87 degrees and 45 mile an hour winds. Just not a good day to be out doing anything, really. But we're at the tail end of that today. High is about 75 today. We've got pop-up thunderstorms all over the area. Just had one pass through. The storm didn't actually pass over this spot, so it didn't actually rain here. But it was just lots of thunder, and I could see the rain, but it never passed over this spot. And as I'm sure you're assuming, with the thunderstorms in the area, that means the barometric pressure is uh, nice and low. It's right at about 29.6, so that's good. I did try some carp fishing during one of those hot and windy days. Found a little spot that was uh, got me out of the wind, but the fish weren't having it. Just the wild fluctuations in temperature and stuff, and nah, they just they were just hanging tight. They weren't out feeding. In other words, I got skunked. And this pack bait is left over from that previous trip. It's just oats and sweet feed and pears and vanilla. Here it is. Banana tiger nuts on the hair. There's that pack bait I just told you about. 99% rig. This is just an old, old gravel pit. My first time fishing it this year. That's probably about 10, 12 feet deep right there where I put that. There's no structure at this place, no underwater features. There might be a tree or two in there somewhere, but for the most part, it's just a big bowl with steep sides. And uh, pretty sure the fish just roam around just kind of randomly. Uh, don't really have any purpose. There's no shallow areas for, for them to do their spawning or anything. Just the I don't know, five feet of water along the shoreline, but it just goes, it just, I mean, if I walk 10 feet out, I'll be up to my neck. Yeah, first time fishing here this year. Might be the last time too, I don't know. Usually once the water warms up, the, this place turns into pea soup. It stays that way all year. Algae blooms. As you can see, I've got my bank sticks in the water there a little bit. Sometimes people ask why I do that. Let me show you. This is why sometimes I put my bank sticks in the water. It has really nothing to do with fishing. It's just the fact that the bank area that I have to, to walk around on is so skinny that there's barely enough room for me to, uh, to walk between my rods and if I want to have a chair. Uh, so yeah, probably got about six, seven feet of bank space here and uh, that's why I put my bank sticks in the water sometimes, just to make some space for me to walk. So it's about 2.30 in the afternoon, and uh, I don't know, I'll probably just fish here for a few hours, or, uh, or at least until I get chased away by, way by a thunderstorm or something, we'll see. But uh, thanks for tuning in. First fish is on. I haven't been here almost an hour, I think. Man in here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, first fish. Just a dinky little guy. I'm gonna keep his eyes covered because uh kind of freaking out on the mat here but skinny little fish maybe open his eyes up here there he goes skinny little fish two three pounds don't catch them this small very often right, go tell your grandma see ya probably the thing I like the best about tiger nuts is just they're so durable you can catch multiple fish on these they're gonna stay on the hair they don't get ripped off the hair very easily yeah that hook's still still needle sharp Average size fish at this place is probably around five pounds, but there are some bigger ones in here. I think I've caught fish up to 12 pounds out of this pond before. 
And there's lots of uh, little ones like that too, but that one's pretty small for this pond. But that was fun. Let's do that again. What's this? Rusty spinner bait. Guess it'll go in my garbage can. Oh, here's an old one. I bet the person who littered this might be in a nursing home or dead. I right know, this is an old pop can. Oh, beer can. Ham's beer. Nice. Take that. Here, this, this looks more recent. We sat down here and drank some Coors Light. There's another one. There's another one. These are recent. Chances are this moron's still walking around contributing to the problem. But I'll pick up after this slob. Crush them up so they'll fit in my garbage bag. On two more. I must have drank the whole six pack. Good. Did you hear that pop? Apparently, you can break an ugly stick on a cast. Uh, I've seen videos of people doing all sorts of goofy things, you know, saying how tough ugly sticks are and stuff. And, you know, I just casted this. I casted it pretty hard, trying to get it out pretty good. But, uh, I have, uh, this is a two ounce uh, sinker, and I had a bunch of pack bait on there, and uh, then these little uh, baits there. So I'm guessing I had maybe three, I don't know, maybe, maybe four, four, four or five ounces uh, on here. And uh, I just casted it and uh, snapped on the, on the throw. see it broke uh, right in between the first and second um, eyelet and uh, yeah obviously it's fiberglass this is a, a medium heavy so here this is a this is a medium heavy rod I can understand if I was doing this with a medium action and casting a four or five ounce uh, bait this is a medium heavy that's why I bought the medium heavies to cast heavy baits you know, it's rated for 8 to 20 pound line. Yeah, ugly stick, GX2. I'm kind of surprised. I've, got, I've had nothing but good experience with ugly stick until today. I think these do have a seven year warranty. And pretty sure I've only had them maybe five years. Might be, uh, might be looking into a warranty replacement, but uh, I'm still going to keep buying ugly stick rods. I've had, like I said, I've had nothing but good experiences until up until just this moment. I've never snapped a rod like this before. I've broken plenty of rods in, in goofy ways, like by accident, stepping on them or closing them in the truck uh, tailgate or something stupid like that. My fault. Um, never broke a rod on a cast, and especially not in this spot. You would think it would break down here closer to the thinner, thinner piece, but... Uh, yeah, it's been kind of an interesting day. I think that's going to be it for today. <laughs>
Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.